Radical. Welcome to Flea Market Stories, documenting one man's journey into the world of flea marketing. As I'm recording this, I don't have time to have a separate update. I was going to have an update detailing how busy this weekend was going to be and how you should not expect a whole lot from me this weekend. I've taken on some overtime from work and I'm now flea marketing Saturdays and Sundays. So the mere fact I'm able to keep up a lot of these series on YouTube is actually just astonishing. It's freaking astonishing. So it's no small feat. What am I going to do with this flea market stories? I'm not going to go into everything I want to go into because this one's kind of going to be rushed. But there's a couple things that did stick out. One was a frustrating moment to where there's a guy that came by and I call him the spoiler. You know when things are moving smoothly and sometimes you have somebody that comes by and they talk to you and they don't really intend on buying a lot or anything at all, but they're just there to spoil your sales or to be a monkey wrench in the middle of other sales. Now, before this guy came there, there was two beautiful girls that came by and they might have been lesbians. I'm not sure. I'm not going to judge. You know, I tell you, I would have loved to have been the meat in between that sandwich. Let me tell you that. So they came by and they wanted an Xbox controller. I had a black wired Xbox One controller, so, you know, we're in business. They really wanted a white controller, so what I did was I said, you know what, I will actually sell you this white controller on the Xbox I was trying to sell, which is the Series S. And it actually, they felt bad that I would be selling that controller, but I said, no, no, it's okay. The system is white and black, so, you know, the black controller, I think it looks a little better with that controller. And I assured them there'd be no difference. So they said, okay. And it was, uh, they wanted it to be wired. I'm not sure the details or whatnot, but I was trying to test out that it did work. And something happened. The wire did not work with that particular controller. And I switched it out for a different wire. And that one was going to work. In the middle of this, there was a guy that came by and he said he needed a phone charger, something to work with his phone. Now, I'm not sure if he expected to charge his phone there. I'm not sure if he was expecting to get a free cord. I'm not sure. He didn't mention like, okay, I'd like a cord and I'll pay you so much for it. But here I was hustling to try to find a cord for him at the same time trying to please these females. Not in the way I'd like to please those females. So that was stressful. I wound up actually finding a cord that worked with the Xbox controller and selling it to them for 20 bucks. So there was a 20 buck sale right there. The other guy, I, I don't think I found anything that would work on his phone, but I didn't care. The second thing I want to mention is the fact that there was a vendor to the right of me that was really interested in Grand Theft Auto. I had the makings, the beginnings of what I think I will do to the right side of my table, which will be console set up with flat screens. And it's going to be really fancy when I get it all set up. Ideally, I'd like to have, you know, maybe when I expand my flea marketing, uh, Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, all different consoles, and I would just sell them there. You know, I pick them up, maybe at discount prices, maybe they're really dirty, maybe I clean them up, and I make some profit there. But that's something I won't really go into until maybe months ahead when the flea market business is actually hopefully expanded. Like I said, right now, I'm trying to actually just move a lot of the crap that I already have. But it's a fun idea. So this guy was actually helping me. I don't think I got any game sales, but I told him like, hey, you know, you playing that game is actually going to help because, you know, you're playing that game and other people are going to come by and be like, oh, that guy's playing the game. What's he playing and everything? I had my Xbox 360 set up. And one game I generally go with to demo is GTA 4, which is one of the best games on the 360 plus Everybody knows GTA, everybody can pick it up and play, and let's just be honest here, it's just fun to run around that world. Well, he was having so much fun, there were people coming by his table asking him questions about things, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's like two bucks, that was four bucks, and he went back to playing the game. So I just found that to be actually freaking hilarious, that he was paying more attention to the game than he was stuff on his table. And of course, there was that audio of that pleasure device, I'll link to at the end of this, that pleasure device, or I'll just link to the playlist. And that was the guy. He was the guy that actually almost sold what he didn't know. Sometimes people buy pallets of things and he had that female pleasure device. Last thing I want to mention is 
I'm not sure if his name is Barney, but he goes by Barney. He's a very mysterious person. I asked him for his cell phone number, and he said something along the lines of, like, oh, I, I have a landline. I don't use, uh, but I don't believe him. He's a very mysterious character. I don't wanna, I'm not going to say shady, but he's very mysterious. I've gotten a lot of great deals from him. So I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look the other way. I'm gonna go. I got a lot of good deals from him in the past, and usually has some pretty good stuff. Whether it be DVD collections, games, and stuff. Yeah, I don't pay that much for what he has, and I wind up selling it for a good bit more. He actually revealed to me. I looked through his storage unit. He revealed to me that he only really sells things on his table that are related to Hot Wheels, cars, toys. And he has a storage unit full of stuff. So it's weird that he's there selling stuff, but he's not going to take full advantage of the stuff he has in a storage unit. That's kind of weird, you know? Like he focuses just on certain things, and he acquires things, and he sells off the rest. I don't really understand it. I, I will say that he brought me stuff to the table, and sometimes you'll have people you buy things from, and they'll come to your table, and they'll present things. I've done it too. There's a buddy of mine that used to buy, weeks ago, he bought Pokemon cards for me when I had the Ancient Mew, and I would go to his booth, and I would present anime stuff. And I'd say, you know, here's a Goku t-shirt or whatnot. You know, I'm only asking three bucks for it, you know. And then usually he would take me up on an offer. I offer good stuff, though, when I'm going to make the presentation. Now, your presentation to a, another table, another vendor, can be accepted or rejected. This has happened before. I think I mentioned one person. He's not a regular there, but he came over and he presented a, pl uh, was it Xbox? I think an Xbox controller. It might have been a PlayStation. The thing was caked in dirt. He presented it and then he smiled and he said, interested? And I was like, no, not at the moment. I was being nice. I was not interested at all, but I said, not at the moment. I mean, a couple bucks maybe if you clean that thing. Yeah. It was nasty. It was nasty. You can't sell nasty stuff. You shouldn't sell nasty stuff. Now, what he presented to me in that box, it was two different things. In that box was... No, I think it was in the box. It was a lot of plug-and-play game systems, and I don't mess with that kind of crap. I don't. I didn't even recognize any of this, and it wasn't like a at games. It even wasn't an at games. It was like the lowest of the low, the crappiest of the crappiest plug-in games. Stuff that I just know I couldn't sell. Stuff that I wouldn't want. Number one, can't sell it. Number two, I don't personally want it. So I said, uh, he left it there and let me mull over it. And he came back and I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to say no on this one. There was some kids DVDs in there, but right now I have a good stock of kids DVDs that I got from him. I'm talking like, you know, a month ago I got 60 or 70 kids DVDs from him for 20 bucks, which I've actually made some money on that. So that's good. But whatever he would want for this, I know it would be too much. Even like five bucks for this? Ah, ugh, no. No, I didn't want anything to do with this. Now, there was a box in there that actually, if you find the right person, it was a Lenovo ThinkPad charging station. It was brand new. And I looked on eBay, and they're going for, I think, maybe 100 something like 125 so it's one of those specific items where if you find the person that wants it, then you know you got some money. But at a flea market in that setting, I, I don't think I'm ever going to wind up selling it because they're going to ask, what does it go for? Oh, I don't have one of those. It's a specific item. Nice item, but a specific item. Kind of like, you know, headlights for a Volkswagen Jetta. Black head headlights, new headlights for a Volkswagen Jetta. you got to find somebody that has a Volkswagen Jetta. So... I'm not sure. Let's see here. What was the deal I made? Uh, I said I'm not going to go 20 on the box. Somehow it wound up where I gave him 10 for the ThinkPad. And I did that just to be nice. Just because the sales were coming in pretty good that morning. Just to be nice. But I was not offering any more than 10. I think he wanted 20 and I said no 10. And that's the max, you know. Now, if it was anybody else that I didn't get good deals from in the past, I would have said no. But here's what I did. So the guy to the right of me, I noticed he was selling computer things, computer items. I presented this to him, the same guy that was playing, you know, GTA, right? I figure, hey, you know, you're playing the GTA here. You know, I'm providing you 
hours of entertainment. Seems like he was on that thing playing that game for hours. So I'm like, okay. I didn't say that, but I was thinking, okay. I present this. And I say, I don't want any money for it. But I notice you have some loose disc, you some DVDs. I mess with DVD sales a whole lot. Now he had this one folder. You know one of those zip folders where you open up and it's like a lot of clear sheets? He had, looked to be about 20, 25 discs in there. And they were loose. And I know... It's, it's hard to sell loose disc. It's hard. You don't have the case. I took advantage of this. You don't have the case. And I'm thinking a lot of them might be scratched up. I sometimes can, you know, get the gunk or whatever. I can maybe get out some of those light scratches by using a technique with toothpaste. Sometimes it works. But you know what? I was just, I was just wanting to get rid of this thing. And I figure if this guy actually takes it, he deals on eBay a lot. I don't. This guy can maybe make some money off of eBay and then I made a friend. It's always good to have friend vendors. So I think I handled that situation about the best I could on all fronts. I got about 27 discs I have to look through. Most of them look like they're scratched. I'm not sure if some of them will play. I'll probably make my 10 bucks back. There might be one or two of those I'm going to clean up, clean up and keep. I'm not really sure. But I know given the situation, it was the best I could do. But it's very important when you are presented something, when you are presented something, number one, who it is, if you have dealings with them, if it's someone you're ever going to see again, and whether or not you should accept or reject their presentation. 